It all comes down to this. After 18 matches and 51 total goals and no less than three penalty shootouts, we have arrived at the final match of the inaugural World Simulation Football Classic. I'm Metafiction, joined again by the esteemed Commissioner Canadas as we look to see who will win the most coveted title in international sim football. On one side, you have the Union of Central and South America, or Americas, as they're known for short. And on the other, you have Asiania. And honestly, I could not tell you who is going to win. But one thing is for sure, Candidus, we are in for an incredible match based on the weight of what we've seen thus far in the knockouts. I mean, Asiania has really decided to put on a show at the correct time. Uh not really showing their best efforts in the group stage, but still advancing, and then completely decimating uh, Walland in the quarterfinals and the strong opponent in Africa in the semifinals to get here. Uh, so Asiania is, is really in form for this final matchup. And then you have the Americas coming into the knockouts with a 0-0 draw in two games in the group stage, getting one uh, or getting two goals, their first goals, in the quarterfinals, but still needing penalties to advance. And then another nil-nil draw in the semifinals against the Baltic that was also decided by penalty shootouts with Patrick Kerrigan saving two penalty kicks and scoring the winner with their fourth goal in that, uh, in that shootout. So definitely going to be a... Uh, a game of offense versus defense, maybe? If we want to Absolutely. call it like that. 
absolutely. Offense versus defense, Eastern Hemisphere versus Western Hemisphere. There's a lot at stake. Bragging rights, individual glory, and of course, the the honor of being known as the first WSFC champion. Honestly, it is going to be very fascinating to see how this Asiania offense that has really kicked into life in these knockouts will take on the probably the best defense in the entire tournament in the Americas. Those two those two goals they scored they conceded rather in the knockout quarterfinal to Canada have been the only goals they let in the entire tournament if you don't count penalty shootouts. So frankly, I think if any defense in this tournament could weather the storm that Asiania has brought in this in this crucial knockout phase, it would be the Americas. So honestly, I think you can make a case for it going either way. Asiania more than likely will be looking to make a mar- make their mark quick and quickly scoring as scoring quickly, trying to get that advantage early on. Because you you have to cons- you have to think the more the longer it goes on and that it's scoreless the more it favors America. They've proven that they can grind out that advantage. They can shut down really powerful attacks and make the offense play their game. And if they can do that, I think they have a chance here against Asiania. But the question is, will Asiania be able to overwhelm them? And that's a question that will determine a lot about this match. We also saw in the uh, in the quick run through of the statistics prior to this game that uh, Borat Borat and uh, Vidal Valor, the two central defenders of the uh, Americas, had one hundred percent and ninety nine percent respectively passing rate, and that's no small feat considering that they've both passed each two hundred passes or attempted two hundred passes, with only one out of those 400 in total going to the opposition. Uh, so definitely a good, solid defense, both in the build-up play and in the defensive actions that they can take as well, which will be interesting to see, which will be uh, if they can continue on that form and stop the runs from Aloisi, Liang Kwai, and Shinji Kaido that we saw uh, successful in the in their game against the uh, African Federation in the semifinals. And in that match, it should be noted, Asiania did cl- keep a clean sheet over what ha- what we saw in the group stage is a very dominant African attack. So certainly not to sleep on the Asiania defense here. Even as, even as we praise the Americas defense, neither team especially leaky in terms of in the goal department. So... This promises to be, like I said, very fascinating, very well played, and hopefully a very interesting tactical battle as well. But time will tell. Only one of these teams can be the inaugural WSFC champion. Let's see how they will start off. Now we have... Let's see here if we can get to the game as well. There we go. There we go. Uh, we have the Americas with their 4-2-3-1 formation and Asiana with an also 4-2-3-1, but closer together in the middle uh, compared to the wingers used by the Americas. The same setup as the semifinals. Uh, both teams looking to make uh, a quick uh, contribution here in the in the start of this uh, WSFC final. Indeed, we are 90 or perhaps 120, as things may be, minutes away from knowing the first ever WSFC champion as Asiania have kicked us off. Liang Kwai, who has three goals in this knockout stage, there on the ball briefly. And the first highlight will be Nunez for Americas tried the free kick in, but it was headed clear. Munoz to clean up back into Nunez. Americas not really one to take attacking initiative in most of their matches, but they are capable of scoring goals as we saw 
er earlier in the knockouts. Ball in, but it's but it's sent clear. I believe that was Ryan. And they are ruled offside, and the ball would go to Asiania. Why sends in the free kick, and it's claimed by Kerrigan, who, as you said, was the hero of the semifinals for Americas in honestly the most amazing way I've ever seen a goalkeeper take charge of a game. Yeah, it was definitely a, a sight to see there in the penalty shootout. You just don't often see goalkeepers taking, stepping up in the penalty shootout, but he did, and credit to him, it ended up paying off very well as uh, Kaido concedes the corner to the Americas. Nunez steps back to take. Well, in. it's headed at the goal, but the Asiania goalkeeper does indeed hold on. That's Asiania with the free kick. Liang Kwai tried to chip it in. Finds Borat. Pushed over by Vokovic, but it is, the ref says play on, and America's trying to get forward. That was a very strong challenge by Vokovic, but nothing in it says the ref. And now Kaido coming forward. Liang Kwai. Wang Zhihao. Pass, passing very short, very methodical in this attacking third for Asiania. Kaido out to Ryan. I think he finds space for a cross, and Nunez concedes the corner. The Asiania players did not seem to uh, take uh, the uh, the shove there by uh, by Borat as as bad as as it looked like. So maybe the ref made the right decision there. It, it would I would just, I would imagine so. Yes, uh, Vins uh, as the ball is headed clear. It, it looked like a clean challenge to me from where I'm sitting. Certainly, you might it, certainly a replay might you might be able to take issue with that, but I didn't think I think that was indeed a clean challenge. I think the referee got it right there. Martinez won possession but lost it. Garen tried to find Vukovic on the cross, but it was sent out for a throw. Well, in Gera. Send it over, sent it over the bar. It was an excellent ball over the top. Just couldn't get the finish right. Looks Americas like, have not a. Sorry. It looks like the uh, the American defense is is putting on a show here. Contained that, the Asiania that, offense. Indeed, that I believe was the Asiania's first shot on goal all match. As another corner is headed clear. And Kwai cleans up. Martinez back to Maximiliano. As they will reset play, trying to find that angle to break down this defense. They don't find it this time. Interception by Possible. Now Americas take possession. Possible up the right wing. Contested by Liang Kwai. Almost got past it. Back to Moons. Playing through playing in defense. Here's here's Guerra into Munoz. Now possible dribbling forward through the mid midfield. But try the through ball to Guerra. Guerra fires directly at the keeper who spills it, but Ryan there to cover it. And once again, we see a pass directly back to the keeper. Oh, Possible's down. Possible's down. Oh, that that could be a huge problem for America as he's been very good in this match so far. They'll put the ball out of play as the physio comes on. Well, it looks like it looks like Possible's been given the okay to play on here. Very hard in mouth moment for America's there. Asiania come forward. Wang Zhihao. 
Now Liang Kwai wanted a through ball, but nobody was making the run. So America is now coming forward. Possible finds the pass to Guerra, coming down the right wing. Now Munoz switches to the other flank to Nunez. No, Novokovic tried the cross, but Ryan there was there with the block. It will be another America's corner. There are just too many Asiania defenders there for for uh, the Americas to get something in the box. It's certainly been a resolute performance from Asiania, but also a very positive game from the Americas there. It's almost as if the roles that we set up at the beginning of this stream were have been reversed. America's much on much of the attack. Asiania, the ones stout in defense. Quai tried an ambitious through ball there, but that's sent behind for a corner. Vins Vins will take. And it's headed clear again. I believe that was to Shara. As we near half time, neither team has really put their stamp on this. It's been a solid defensive performance at both ends. Martinez now for Asiania. Leanne Kwai. It was... It, it, and it goes offside. It looked it looked like Aloisi might have been offside when he played that pass back to Kwai. Nunez. Bokovic. Crossed in, and again, those center backs of Asiania rebuffing the cross in. Now possible coming forward again. He's made quite a few runs so far today. Cross blocked by Kaido for a corner. Nunez tried to find the header. It went over the bar. And I believe we're going to go into halftime with the score still knotted at nil-nil. And indeed we have. A very defensive match thus far. Certainly certainly one for the one for the tacticians out there, it should be said. Americas has really been able to shut down the Asiania offense, only getting two shots on target and none of them really dangerous, as we can see the expected goals only. 0 0.07 in total from the Asiania shots here. Uh, they are in a relatively good position in the box, but there are usually defenders on top of the, the shot there. So uh, usually Kerrigan has some space or some, has the ability to see uh, or um, otherwise deflect the shots that are coming in. Actually, the Americas that has the more more dangerous opportunities here, and that's certainly something that I certainly didn't expect going in. But it's a credit to how well rounded both of these teams are that they've managed to completely subvert our expectations. The Asiania defense has held solid, even if they haven't been able to get much going at the other end of the field. And likewise, they've been put under a lot of pressure from the Americas. So both teams. I suppose you could call it playing against type, but they're doing so fairly effectively. They've sort of neutralized each other so far. It's going to be very fascinating to see how the second half plays out under these conditions. We will see a substitution as we've done in the past for Asiania. Uh, we have Dobby Rube coming in for Munokoi Saransatral. But we will see uh, both of these keepers have had uh, great success in, in uh, stopping the shots of the opposition. So hopefully Rube can 
continue the form of Saran Central here in the second half. And honestly, it's a very good problem to have if you're Asianian. Saran Setsral, who has started every match for Asiania, had a 78.8% save percentage, which was in the high, second highest in the major division in season 12 after Scott Sterling. And then on the bench, you've got Dobby Wu for Tokyo and Cairo, who kept five clean sheets in league play last season. So absolutely both goalkeepers meriting inclusion. And the way that they've been able to accommodate both goalkeepers has been very has been played to each each his strengths I must say looking at the build up play here for uh, for Asiania the uh, there is a lot of space out wide uh, but there is even more space out wide for the Americas because uh, the uh, both Liang Kuai and Kaide are are placing themselves very, uh, very centrally in the field, uh, but it doesn't look like the Americas are taking advantage of those, that space that they are given. It certainly would make sense to exploit that wide space, as Kuai uh, or Ryan, sorry, Wang Ji Hao left it off for Ryan, who fired a shot in, but was blocked, and now Bailey Diali countering for the Americas. Dribbling, dribbling past Ryan. Now finds Nunez. And that's knocked out by Kaido. But like you say, America's playing much wider than Asiania. As Wang Ji Hao blocks the shot from Vokovic to concede another corner. And that's dealt with with relatively little trouble, though Munoz does claim it for the Americas, who do come forward again, but to no avail. We are seeing that the potential injury that uh, Possible had in the first half is is uh, having an impact on, on the stamina or the fatigue uh, now here in the second half. Hopefully Indeed, she can what? pull it out. Uh, she can she can pull it off and and uh, continue on for the remainder of the game here. In the meantime, Liang Kwai finds the through ball to Aloisi. Aloisi, but it's saved at close range by Kerrigan, making himself known again. That was a cheeky try from Aloisi trying to chip <laughs> chip Kerrigan, but uh, Kerrigan read that perfectly. There's a lot of keepers that might have worked on. I don't think Kerrigan is one of them. There's now Inklan. Ball to De, De Alley. Forces a decent save out of Rube for another corner. These goal kicks are turning into, turning into offensive chances. Uh, we've seen a few of them. And that was cleared off the line by Ryan. Now Al Luisi. That was... And Il Aloisi was fouled by Inclan. Wasn't quite an obvious goal scoring opportunity, so no booking, but that does break up the movement that Asiania could have built there. Martinez to Liang Kwai, Wang Jihao. Inclan wins it off of Jihao. Now Americas can come forward again. Nunez gets it past Ryan with an excellent touch. Now Kaido to contest. And concedes the corner again. Kaido has done really well trying to block off these crossing opportunities. Actually going back to the goal line. Most of these chances. Absolutely. As the ball is headed out again. America's still hanging on to it. Now wide to Nunez again. And again, Kaido pressuring. But Asiania win it back and come forward. Now Vins Vins with the throw. Martinez heads on to Liang Kwai. Tries to cross, and it's a corner for Asiania now.
Vins Vins fires in and it's headed out. Now Vins Vins tries to cut inside, but a good challenge by Guerra. Wang Ji Hao. Maximiliano switches out to Ryan. Now Kaido. That duel between Kaido and Nunez has been one of the defining clashes of this final match. Ryan tries to cross in. There were red shirts there in the box, but it was it was sent out. I believe again that was Teixeira. Izzyanya dwelling on the ball here. Into the midfield for Martinez. Wang Jihao. Aloisi plays in Kaido. And it's right at Kerrigan who holds on to it. That might have been the best chance Aziana has had in a while. Gotta give it to Kaido oh. there for finding the space behind uh, the America's defenders. But uh, Kaido might not be the person you want to try to take those opportunities as he is more well known for uh, his passing ability than his scoring ability. Certainly if the roles had been reversed with with uh, Kaido passing to Aloisi, that might have been a very lethal combination. Valor plays it forward. Maximiliano to Martinez. And here's Kaido again. There it is, finding Aloisi fires over the bar. That was a that was an attempt. <laughs> Aloisi uh, trying to uh, to shoot it with confidence there, but uh, alas, did not hit the target. It is it is a very tense battle here in the WSFC final. We're approaching the ten minute remaining mark. Both sides have had some decent chances, but nothing showing on the scoreboard yet. Man Kwai sends a long ball forward, hoping to find Aloisi, but instead finds an American shirt. Now possible Guerra, who is on a booking, coming forward. Back to possible. Guerra crosses, finds the alley! And that could be decisive! Diali heads in from close range to make it 1-0 to the Americas. And that was a well-worked goal. Great run here by Possible to find the open space and, and clear the defenders to get the pass to Guerra. And then Guerra with the great cross to Diali, separating himself from the defenders, getting the head on it, and just, it's an open net. You, you need to score from there, and he did. An absolutely crucial goal at this late stage of the match. America's won, Asiania nil. And could that be the winner, or do Asiania have a response? Maximiliano tries to find Aloisi. He receives it, but there's not many men for, or players forward. Aloisi hasn't Valor. really been able to find the the line behind the defenders this game. Uh, we saw it in the quarterfinals and in the semifinals that he was always trying to run run behind them to try to find the, the open lanes, but has not been able to do so this game. Certainly America's not not necessarily allowing such such attacking lanes for Asiania as Aloisi is used to. Maximiliano has a has a shot from long range, but range, but that was never troubling the goalkeeper. Nunez, from the free kick, finds Teixeira, whose header is not on target. And it will be a goal kick for Asiania. And there we see again, Alisi not able to make that, that run past the back line, as you said. Although Asiania do still have the ball now. 
Maximiliano. Now Ryan out wide. Kaido. Again trying to find Aloisi, but he's been he's been well marked by Donna Ruma there. You can see some of the uh some of the pressure get, getting to Aloisi. I don't know what he said to the keeper there. Uh but uh might have some words. Vince Vince missing the challenge on Guerra, who plays in the alley, but is shut down by Valor and Maximiliano before um, before they can make this take a shot at making it two nil. Van Kwai. Now Ryan finds Kwai in the box. Can't get it past Kerrigan. It's another goal kick, or corner kick, excuse me. That would be the exact opposite of what we're seeing. It was a great chance for Reggiana to tie the game. But uh, Kerrigan, again, makes himself known. Indeed. Although Asiania is still looking to fashion something as Maximiliano takes another long shot that goes over the bar. Five minutes, more or less, remaining in this final match. Time very rapidly running out for Asiania. If, if they want to prolong this match, they're going to have to find something in fast. Now Martinez coming forward. This time finds Aloisi. Jihau tried to play it again to Aloisi, but now Kaido takes a shot at the edge of the box. That's also over the bar. Falls to, falls to Americas. Rube very bravely coming out to clear. That could very easily have gone wrong. Instead, cool heads prevail. Now Martinez switches it out to Lian Kwai on the near side. Three goals in the knockout stage. Certainly looking for a fourth, you would have to imagine. And it would be a very good time for it. But instead, Guerra dribbling up the right flank. Guerra again. Plays in Inclan. What a and Inclan has put this away. What a pass and, by Guerra there. An absolutely incisive move by the Americas. And I think at the risk of... Speaking prematurely, I think we might have just seen the the goal that clinches this final for Americas. Placed the pass perfectly. Inclan timed his run exactly correctly and puts it past Dobby Root in goal. It is 2-0 Americas over Asiania with just over one minute of regular time left. And I think that's all we'll require on this occasion. And indeed, we are in stoppage time. Kwai, the free kick. And it's headed out for a corner. Need something here. I don't believe they'll get it as it's cleared. Gera coming forward. Jihau with a good tackle. But concedes the corner from it. This is not what, what Aziania needs. Ball headed clear. And it's Ruma who gets for, to it first. I'm very quickly running down. And Ram Ramirez has won the ball. It's headed out. The, whistle, uh, the referee can blow the whistle soon, I'm sure. This must surely be it. Final chance. Ball is headed clear by Vins Vins. It falls to possible. It crosses in and it's headed out. And that is it. Aquí están sus campeones. Americas are the winners of the first ever 
World Simulation Football Classic. What an incredible match. A well-deserved victory by the Americas who put on a complete performance at both ends. And <laughs> we see them all dancing as the captain lifts the trophy. And they've earned the right to these candidates. It was an incredible performance throughout the tournament and certainly today. Certainly a more lethal attacking performance than we've seen from them all tournament. And it came at exactly the right time. The Americas conceded only two goals during the entire tournament. That's about five games, only two goals conceded. And in fact, they only conceded those two goals in one singular match against Canada in the quarterfinals meaning that Americas have now, with this win, kept four clean sheets in the WSFC, which to me is just an incredible feat, no matter how you slice it. I mean, the the, uh, the defensive actions uh, or the defensive performances by both the central uh, defenders, uh, Borat Borat and Vidal Valor, as well as the two, uh, the two um, uh, defensive midfielders, Munoz and... Who is the second one? It's uh, uh, Ramirez. I mean, they they have completely shut down the Asiani offense this time around, and shut yeah. down a lot of the other offensives uh, offenses in this tournament. Without a doubt, they've been on form all tournament. They are, if you ask me, they and Kerrigan are the biggest reasons that America's got to this stage to begin with. And once they got here, it was the attack that will deservedly share the the headlines tomorrow with a goal from Bailey D'Ali that proved the decisive goal and then that late clincher from Nicolas Inclan. But it's sorry, Guillaume, I, I, Guillaume. Sorry. I, I need to correct myself. It's Donnarumma and uh, Santiago Teixeira, uh, who's the central defenders here on, on America's. Uh, I mentioned Indeed. the Asiania central defenders uh, in a mistake there. Uh, Donnarumma and Teixeira are the defenders Americas that has really shut down the opposition. Absolutely. Full credit to them. But deservedly the player of the match, Guillaume, Guillerme Guerra there for the Americas, I believe set up both goals or at least the first one. Yes, but he ever did. Present, but ever present in the Americas attack for this match. Well worth, well worth, worthy of man of the match. And credit Ooh. again to the defeated Asiania team. They did very well to get to this stage. Uh, some very strong performances from Liang Kwai and Shinji Kaido and Baraka Aloisi. Came up short on the day, but certainly worthy beaten finalists. There we have it. The Americas, the top team of the World Simulation Football Classic knockouts. Asiania coming in second here. I'm not sure what we're seeing here. We're probably getting an overview of all the teams oh and here we go the team of the tournament and the americas clear <laughs> clear it the american defense and that sums it up i think that american defense was rock solid throughout the entire tournament the back four of nunez to share ruma possible and kerrigan in goal and then in the midfield, we saw the Asiania players, Kaido and, and Kwai, who joined Nicholas Inclan and Guillaume Guerra. And then, of course, up top, Sky Rise, the tournament's top scorer, joined by Paul Penshaw of Wales and England. Both strikers there managing to get two goals in their single game. 
that unfortunately did not lead to their team advancing from the quarterfinals, but still enough of a performance to get awarded these uh, these accolades of the, the tournament. Indeed. And Sky Rai is actually getting player of the tournament here as well for for his performance. Uh, now this uh, this statistic doesn't take into account the group stage, but I mean, considering that the group stage in in that uh, in those games, Sky Rise scored six goals in two appearances. I mean, I I wouldn't give any other uh, player uh, this award. Maybe Kerrigan in the Americas. It's a strong debate to be had for sure, but nevertheless, a well deserved award for Sky Rise, in my opinion. Oh. <laughs> Did we play again? No. <laughs> no. I'm sure there are some teams that would like another crack at this, for sure. For sure. And uh, hopefully this will not be the uh, one and only World Simulation Football Classic that we will have in the Simulation Soccer League. Uh, the uh, we this is the last tournament that we are playing on FM twenty two, and starting next season, next week actually, and not tomorrow, but the week after, we are transitioning to FM twenty four. So we will possibly see the new uh, World Simulation Football Classic in FM twenty four. In I don't want to say anything definitive right now, but maybe in four or five seasons from now, we want to try this. Again. Well, I, for one, cannot wait. And as far as an end of an era goes for FM22, I can't think of a better way to send it out. This was a very exciting championship final. Congratulations again to the Americas on their deserved championship win. And that's all that I can think to say, really. Uh, this has been an incredible tournament, uh, both watching it and commentating it. and. Honestly, I can't, I'm a little sad that it's over, but at the same time, it's been a lot of fun. Like, no qualifications. This has been an absolute blast from start to finish. And it doesn't stop there. Even though that this tournament is uh, over, we still have the next season to, uh, to look forward to uh, when it comes to the, uh, both the league uh, in the major and minor league and the SSL Academy where the new players from season 14 class or from the season 14 class are going to uh, duke it out and earn some TP, get some experience behind them and join the league uh, the season after. So even though that this tournament is over, we still have some great games to look forward to in the next season. Absolutely. And as far as those Academy players go for season 14, Certainly, I've I've had a look at a couple of them. It's already looking like a very stacked season fourteen class, so that will be very exciting to see how those players develop between now and the draft at the end of season thirteen. Well, with that, I think that we are uh, finished with today's stream. Uh, congratulations again to the Americas as the inaugural World Simulation Football Classic champions. And uh, I think a lot of other teams, a lot of our other players are eager to uh, make, uh, make an impact in the league and in the next uh, international tournament that uh, we will have here in the SSL. And it's like I said at the beginning of the tournament, international soccer just hits differently and i think we proved that throughout this entire tournament just a, a whole slate of interesting matchups and fascinating scores and some of the best performances i've seen from ssl although take that with a grain of salt i've only been here a season so <laughs> but nevertheless i found myself very impressed So with that, I think we're going to bid uh, the viewers at home goodbye. Uh, and uh, for me personally, it's about one hour left uh, of this year. Uh, so I'm going to be uh, preparing for a lot of fireworks outside my house. 
uh, and uh, hoping for a good next year as well. So thank you, Metafiction, for joining me today at, in the, at the commentary booth. And thank, thank you for you having me. For watching all of you at home. And Happy New Year. Happy New Year, everyone.